This is JPR, Jefferson Public Radio's News and Information Service. It's 840 on the Jefferson Exchange. I'm Jeffrey Riley. Thank you for listening. Every occupation is a bit different from the next, and there are things required in some workplaces that are never expected in others. Your boss is probably not going to tell you to kiss a coworker while suggestively stroking his leg. But these are the kinds of things that actors are supposed to do on stage. You can see the opportunity for embarrassment and confusion and more, which is why the Oregon Shakespeare Festival recently announced the naming of its first resident intimacy director. Sarah Lozoff has an unusual job. As the first resident intimacy director for the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, her main job is to help actors choreograph on stage intimacy. But the other part of her job is to educate others about why her role is even necessary. They're being told, hey, make that hotter, mm -hmm. make that sexier. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. What's sexy to me might not be sexy to you, <laughs> right? If I say, hey, can we slow that down a little bit? Can we use some breath work? What if your back arches a little bit more here? Acting has been around since the 6th century. But for an ancient art form, the theatre world is just acknowledging the need to choreograph love scenes safely. And then she'll skip to Good, yeah, can we try this just one more time and make sure we know where that hand grab comes and then... Can you actually describe your role, your day-to-day -day as an intimacy director? How do you bring a script to life for an intimate scene? So a large part of that is, is consent work, teaching it, unpacking it, figuring out what that is at this time in our culture. The second part of that is protocols, and that can be something as simple as we have some nudity and um, making sure that when we're in tech and an actor is asked to hang out on stage for hours, that maybe they're in a robe until they absolutely don't have to be because now we're lighting their skin. And then the third part is the actual choreography <laughs> and the, the crafting of these moments and making sure that they're improving the storytelling. When she pushes you, you, you're surprised by it. You don't have time to get your bag. You can get it when you cross to make those amends, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned that the boundary setting is some of the most difficult work. What do you mean by that? It's a gig economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to get hired again. Mm -hmm. um, and often the advice that we have grown up with and been trained with is don't be difficult to work with say yes and. If we can get people to start saying no, then we can trust it. Because now we actually have options. If yes is the only acceptable answer, that's not an option. And it becomes quite meaningless. It's a mandate then. I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest bond. Nubia Monks and Jonathan Stevens play two teenagers crazy in love in this year's production of OSF's Midsummer Night's Dream. Sorry if I'm interrupting. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, Hello. was that intimacy? <laughs> yeah, this is how we do it. This is us. Yeah. We were just checking in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah? What's checking in? And we start with asking each other, what places on your body are you not comfortable with me touching? That is body mapping. And you do that every time, every... Before a rehearsal, yep. before a show, we'll check in. My shoulders are green. Great. My tummy is green. Okay. My back is green. Okay. Legs green. Mm -hmm. Feet green. Mm -hmm. And for today, I'm gonna say butt green too. Hey. If, if you, if you, yeah, you don't have to, but no, butt's, okay. butt's green if we wanna, if we wanna play. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh God, I wanna do that every day with my boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. How am I feeling today? You better make him body That's man. Right. That's okay. right. That's right. <laughs> As actors, we forget that we have agency, especially when it comes to intimacy. You mean to tell me I don't gotta hug you if I don't want to? You mean to tell me if I'm not feeling it today, you don't have to kiss? You mean to tell, and the director is, is okay with that. You don't have to feel guilty about it. If you were to rehearse the scene without an intimacy director, what would you do? You'd probably just kind of make a choice and go. Like the director will probably give us blocking and then it's up to us. Do we kiss here? Do we hold hands yeah. here? Do we hug here? Touching, mm. you can say so much mm. with that. You have no clue what could be happening yeah. up on that stage that might seem okay, but actually might be inappropriate within between the two actors, you know? When you first sort of interacted with Sarah, with the intimacy director, and, and, and now, what is your opinion of intimacy director? It changed my life. It changed my entire trajectory because I was 
ready to walk away from this craft because of the sexual trauma that I had in, in experienced over the years. Directors weren't trained to, you know, work on intimacy and from someone like me who yeah has sexual trauma to do to just be thrown into stuff like that it 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 created this really bitter taste in my mouth towards the craft I wonder if he can do that into her instead of getting further from her yes. a, a nuzzle a nestle yeah Lozoff got her start at OSF by teaching choreography and movement she came across Intimacy Directing by chance in an article that highlighted a grassroots collective called Intimacy Directors International. What does it take to become an Intimacy Director? There were 15 of us training for advocacy and consent work and talking about implicit bias and sensitivity training, but also actually choreographing intimacy um, and simulated sex and talking about what those protocols are. Anything I could get to as an observer, as an assistant um, with Tonya and Alicia Rodas, those two women have been at the forefront of this for quite some time. Now your partner is each other. The ensemble is your partner. The ensemble is holding you up, and you need them. Just be in the work. We met Tonya Cena and Alicia Rodis at an intimacy choreography workshop two years ago. Think about all the places that you might protect and open them up. When conversations around the culture of consent were fresh wounds that needed quick healing. It can be awkward at times. You can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> Workplaces were adapting guidelines for anti-sexual harassment training. However, Hollywood didn't have a method for fixing harassment in acting. So Tonya made up her own. I'm going to explain to you part of the intimacy for the stage method. which Any art where people have to touch on a professional level. You don't have to do that in a cubicle, but you have to do that in the performing arts. So we need to have a standardized process to handle it, just like we do with stage combat, with stunts, with dance. Choreography has to be there. Is there room for chemistry in this method? Or can you harness it in some way? Yes, you can. You can pretend to have chemistry, and it can look very real. How do you then sort of teach chemistry, I suppose. Mm -hmm. how, how, where does it fit within the clinical choreography of the method you've devised? Would you like me to show you? Sure. Am I going to get... <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is sit there. Okay. Okay. I felt it. I got it. <laughs> what am I thinking? I mean, you're admiring me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really just about seeing this person as a human. And you can really love anybody that's sitting across from you. I'm it's coming here, Moral. <laughs> <laughs> and this knee can be a little lower to mask. Okay. There you go. There you go. Yeah. How do you define sexual harassment in a staged intimacy scenario? The line is when something is done physically to another person without their consent. And that's it. SAG-AFTRA, the union body for film actors, released their standards for intimacy coordinating just this year, two years after the height of Me Too. It lists recommended standards and protocols for using intimacy coordinators, including experience and training in consent, power dynamics, anti-harassment, and the use of modesty garments but offers no clear certification process. For a need that seems obvious, it's not legally required. There is no governing body, there is no law that says we have to have an intimacy director or choreographer on anything. Do you think that theatres and studios will start insisting on it more, not only to protect the actors, but to protect themselves in terms of liability, you know, legally? Yeah, I think that's a lot of what we're seeing right now, which bums me out a little bit. It's a reactionary sort of protective thing that comes from like 
a, a sexual harassment place. The Weinstein effect. Exactly. What will it take before it's sort of more normalized? I do think that we're at a tipping point when a theater of this size commits to this position. That's going to create a ripple effect throughout the American theater landscape. Why do you think it's only been recently that people have started to decide, okay, we need a, a protocol, we need parameters for this in the same way that we do stunt work? I think a lot of things came public when the election happened. Right. And one of our largest role models was saying that this was a normal behavior. And so you're talking about Trump? I'm, I am, yes. So from the campaign through yeah. the election? The campaign was exactly when I feel like there was a shift right. in the population, in the way in the way women were being treated, and the way women realized that they were being treated. So you already had the method, but it took this sort of cultural reckoning for people to really start saying, OK, we need to build momentum with it. I think that that's when people of all kinds started signing on. A lot of it came from, how can I help somebody who might experience trauma if somebody is guiding them the wrong way or has already experienced trauma somehow? How can I make them comfortable so that they can find a natural way to perform intimacy on stage and make it fun? Because stage combat was fun. Yeah. You know, people love stage combat and swashbuckling and that seems really cool. Yeah. But suddenly when they see sex, it's awkward and nobody wants to do it, nobody wants to touch it. And that's a real shame. It should be just yeah. as fun. We don't go, show me what it looked like the last time you were in a bar fight. Oh no, that's not right for this. When was the last time you were in a sword fight? Oh, sorry, you can't do this. None of us have that experience, right? And somehow when it comes to this, this extremely private, vulnerable, intimate thing, we rely on what we actually do in our bedrooms. Ooh, I don't wanna do that. Let me show you what I do at home. That's super creepy, it's very inappropriate, and it's gonna be boring. And so we have a very puritanical mindset when it comes to talking about it, but we're porn obsessed. So we want to see it, we just don't want to talk about it. Mm, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> this is not pornography. It's, it's got a story that we're trying to tell and it's, it has to fit into the play. It can't stand out. And sometimes it, it takes the audience out if it's not done properly. But it's also not just simulating sex because, I mean, give me my phone book and I'll find you a hundred women who've been faking orgasms for years. That's what our society's done to us. Mm -hmm. I think uh, treating it very clinically mm -hmm. is the key. Um, they are body parts and it's choreography, just like everything else. 14. I'm not sure why and when we decided that sex was different. I think it was only because people didn't want to handle it. And so they, they just glossed over it. Do you think that says something about just culture or society? Definitely, definitely. And I think also uh, not enough representation of the female voice. That's an effect of that. When you don't have a voice of, of a population of people, it's not going to be represented in the work. And that's, I think, what's changing in the arts now. I also read about, you talked about an experience you had where you described it as while you were acting on stage, someone added intimacy. Yes. He knew what he did, but he didn't know that it was wrong. Right. Um, it was, well, this is the last performance, so let's amp it up. But he didn't ask me before the show. It, well, there was no, you know, it wasn't complicit. It wasn't uh, a conversation or any kind of collaboration on that. It was solely his decision in the moment, and he just went with it. And he kissed me two extra times, and I had to receive it in character, as she would have received it. They have to understand that permission from the director does not mean that they have consent from their partner. And so that's really important 
to be able to work with your partner on. That just because a director told me I can do this to my partner doesn't mean that I can do it without asking my partner. So this is a specialty. It actually takes training. It takes movement training. It takes anatomy training. It takes personality, temperament. There's a way that you have to be vulnerable when you're teaching it. You also have to demonstrate these things. So you, you have to have acting training. Uh, and it takes years to be able to build the confidence to be able to show people how to do this work without slipping into something that is accidentally harassing to, to the actors. It's a minefield. I it mean, is. Even A-list actors, I mean, the consensus is, they all say, like, filming sex scenes is awkward. You know, you get to the sex scene, how are we going to do this? Um, why is it a given that sex scenes should be awkward? Hollywood is an industry in its own. And when you have certain people in charge that don't prioritize the safety of the actors, even those actors fell to the same thing that I fell to, you know? This was happening to me as well. Mm. And you just believe this is how it's supposed to be because it always was that yeah. way. Art is reflective of the time. And right now, our art is going to tell us stories of this harassment. It's going to now show, show up in the art. So that'll be even more work for intimacy directors because there will be sexual assaults on stage. There will be sexual harassment on stage that we'll have to choreograph. A lot of the people here today have said how they found your method actually liberating um, and uh, allowed them to actually act sex better. Why is that? They don't have to think about, what is my hand doing? What is his hand doing? His hand's going up my leg. Is he doing that on purpose? Or is that, but is he, does he really like me? Or is he part, is that a character choice? Or is that him doing that? Okay, I'm just gonna respond to it. Oh my gosh, I have lines now. And okay, the lines, okay, I love you. Did I do that right? Or I can't, okay, now he's kissing me. I'm kissing back. Is he in charge of this kiss? Or am I in charge of this kiss? Okay, now I'm kissing him. And, uh, you okay. You just described the sex lives of most women in America. <laughs> 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 Sorry.